Well, welcome to this next tutorial and yet again we're back at the level crossing. Now a couple of days ago I did a tutorial on using the PCA9685 boards to control the servos and the LEDs. Well, fortunately today my wife's car battery was flat. I had to take the car for a drive which meant I went out to Purton Crossing and this time I recorded the sounds of the barrier going up and down on my phone and uh, created a sound file and I did a tutorial recently on the um, soundboard that we're going to be using today it's the DYSV5W MP3 uh, soundboard so I put it all together and this is what I got So that's the results. I now have sound added to the crossing and you'll also notice instead of using a timer I've got a button to start and stop the gate uh, system. That can be replaced by a uh, sensor, it can be a block detector, whatever you want to trigger the gates. So let's have a quick look how this was done. Now I'm not going to go through everything that was in the last video. This is an add-on, so uh, if you haven't seen the last video, go to the Digital Town website. Uh, there'll be a link below the video and you can basically go to the web page that describes how this is done. There's links not only to the tutorial for the, pre the first crossing without sound, but also this uh, MP3 player there's a tutorial on that so you can understand how that works these boards are very cheap they have a an amplifier within them which means the sound quality is surprisingly good way better than the DF mini player and various other ones I've tried so let's look at the circuit what's changed well obviously the servo boards and the LEDs haven't changed at all well, one item here we've got a button at the top with a pull down resistor so that resistor is going to ground this is going to pin 9 and the other side is going to the 5 volts so when we press this button uh, the pin 9 goes high the other item obviously we've got the player this requires 5 volts and a ground uh, I'm using software serial because this is an Arduino Uno and it doesn't have a second serial port. Uh, normally I'd have done this on an ESP32 or a Mega but as I already had the system built up I just continued with the Uno. So that is using pins 10 and 11 using software serial. Again the warning there is a separate uh, 5 volt power supply that is required for all of this because your UNO board will and your USB from your computer will not be able to power all of this and especially as you add more servos and don't forget you can add you know you can have four orange four of one flash four of the other flash four barrier lights and four servos you know and you could mod it to add more if you wanted but that's what's in the code as standard now for the sound file uh, very simple obviously I just went and recorded the barriers on my phone I then put it into a program called audacity found the best bit of the sound file because unfortunately a truck turned up and was waiting at the barriers so I got a bit of the sound file and then I looped it and just copied and pasted it until I'd got a file that's about three minutes long um, I wanted it that long it's way longer than it needs to be but it just means that it's never ever going to run out so that's how the sound file was done I'm not going to go through the connection test because I did that in the previous tutorial let's go straight into the code so starting at the top of the code um, I just put some comments in on some the extra pins that I'm using 
The extra library that was added was Software Serial. Again, if you're doing an ESP32 or a Mega 2560, just use Serial 1 instead. Um, be much better. Uh, things that have changed. The big changes are in the variables. I've listed them under the different devices. So I set up Software Serial on uh, pins 10 and 11. Then I've got the DYSV5W MP3 player functions. These functions, um, if you go to the tutorial on this, and if you go to the Digital Town website, right down at the bottom of the web page for this, there is a set of additional resources, and one of them is the tutorial on this MP3 player, and it will explain in there how the commands work. But these are basically some variables that are required for the um, player to work with the functions I've created. The track number here is the track number that I have on my SD card. I already had some tracks on there, so I just added this one on the end. But you would change this track number to whatever track your um, card has on it. Then we've got a button uh, pin on pin 9. That's basically it for new variables. Whizzing down to the setup. We'll do this in the correct order. So everything here is exactly the same through the servos right down to here. And then all we're doing in the setup that we're adding, we're adding a pin mode for the button. We want it as an input. We then start software serial at a board rate of 9600. That's because that's what the MP3 player requires. Small delay while it just settles down. Then I call a function called playback volume. Again, if you look at the MP3 player um, tutorial, you'll find all of this in here. There are some functions in here. Uh, stop track, play track, playback volume. Um, that's basically it. So playback volume is, I set it to 17, level 17. That's quite loud enough in my small office. It'll go up to level 30, at which time it would be like standing by the barriers by the line itself. I've also put, called the function stop track, which stops the track playing. That was because the track is three minutes long. And when I was doing some testing, sometimes the track was still playing when I restarted. So I just wanted to stop the track and it basically sends a command. The only other function is play track and you send the value of the track that you want, which in my case is always going to be number six. So that's that bit done. Now going down to the main loop, every function that was in the previous um, system is still in there. The LED control, servo control and servo movement are virtually identical. The main difference is in the gate trigger. Now in the last tutorial I was triggering off a timer. This time we're triggering off the button. So let's get up to that um, particular function and we'll take a look at it. Very simple function. So we start the function uh, by creating a variable called button state and we're going to read the button pin. Now in my case uh, if the button was high, value of 1, it's going to call this, uh, it'll cause this if statement to trigger. This sets the LED state to 1, which starts the whole gate opening procedure. So that's the gate opening system. The gate closing system, if I let go of the button, then obviously the button state is 0. If the button state is equal to 0 and the LED state is equal to 5 and the gate state is smaller than 2, these are various states, this is written as a state machine code, then it will set the gate state to 2 and that will start to shut everything down. Simple as that. Right. 
let's have a look at where the sound is triggered. So when the LEDs uh, start, if you remember, the first thing that happens is we have the orange lights flashing. And as the orange lights are flashing, all I did was put in play track and track number. It's as simple as that. The track is now playing. And then to stop the track, the, uh, the sound stops um, in when the case goes to three on the servos. Now, um, this now starts to... So what happens with the barrier when I was watching it? As the barrier goes up, the lights stop before the barrier gets to the very top. Um, I'll put the video in again of the barrier moving at the end of this. But before the, the barrier gets to the very top, the um, lights and the sound stop. So what I've done is as soon as the barrier starts to move uh, back up to its, uh, you know, get the road back open position, I allow two and a half seconds to go by. And at that point, not only do I shut down all the LEDs, but I stop the sounds as well. And that's basically the changes. It's as simple as that. So let's watch the real thing and then we'll watch the model. Well, I think that's pretty close to the original. It's as close as I'm going to get working on it in a hurry. But I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, if you did, please click the like and subscribe. Don't forget, there's uh, all the information, all the code is available on the Digital Town website. Just follow the link below the YouTube video. Thanks for watching. And please, you know, if it's you're enjoying these, please click the like and subscribe. Bye for now.